Okay. I wonder if everyone's, anyone's going to join this live, especially given the fact that I didn't announce it, but let's see. Oh my God, baby, baby, don't you see? I got everything you need. Only a genius can love a woman like you. Oh, woman's true. This is a bummer. Takazani, Takazani, Dinelang, Kanya Lisedi. Okay, so basically there's one person in this live so far. It's weird. Okay. Um, okay, let me wait for more people to join in and then we will start with this live session and yeah. As soon as people join in, then I can actually classify what this session is about and we can jump into it takazani hello everyone who's here already i hope you guys are well takazani nosipo takazani good evening pretty um okay so basically this session is a question and answers live session eh? and the reason why i did this is because i feel as though a lot of people ask so many questions on the comment section and most of these questions there are times where as i feel like i don't really get into details on responding to them so yeah <laughs> here we are so in a nutshell i want us to talk about spiritual things spirituality in a nutshell and this is why as any question can be posted or asked, it can be any question regarding spiritual journeys, um, dream translation, whatever it is that you guys may be feeling as though um, there's a bit of confusion about, right? Um, so earlier today, I posted a video on, um, barking. what is this thing called? Self-initiation. And I saw the some of the comments there, people were saying that they feel as though this is something that um has a lot of hate towards or there's lack of understanding with and honestly with self-initiation on its own or rather jumping into that particular video that i was in i'd personally say that self-initiation is something that not every healer gets to do or gets to be a part of or is basically called into it but there are those people that are gifted to it. So like in Akachupias and whatnot. And those are mainly the people that end up self-initiating. And like I stated in the video, self-initiation doesn't necessarily mean you are initiating yourself, right? Your ancestors are initiating you. And whereas your ancestors are initiating you, they take you through certain procedures and whatnot. But there are so many details on that video. But wherever it is that... I'd say that there was a bit of confusion. Please feel free to ask here on this live. That way I can actually jump into it in more details. And I'd say one of the biggest questions or the most important question that I felt like I was asked throughout that um, comment section was whether a prophet can self-initiate. And the answer is yes. Nay. But just like any other spiritual gift itself, it does go hand in hand with the type of gift that you have or rather the type of ancestors that you possess. For example, there are people that have Abalozi ancestors. Nay. Abalozi ancestors are what I personally refer to as independent spirits. And whereas I refer to them as independent spirits, the main thing about them is that they necessarily don't really need you to go to a copella or go to a mentor of some sort, of any sort. But rather, what happens is that they guide you. They show you what it is that needs to be done, right? And whereas they show you what it needs to be done for you to appease and evoke your spirits, then that is where as um, you begin to see and you begin to be able to help and guide people. So those things are very important to understand. But it's not really with only 
Abba loses spirits. And that's something that I really wanted to, class, to clarify here on this live. But also people that um, have other prophetic gifts. Because prophetic gifts are actually very interesting. And in my perspective, as someone who uses both traditional and prophetic things, I'd say that prophetic gift is something that is quite easy to evoke compared to the traditional gift. Like for a prophetic person, going to the river on a regular basis going to the mountains on a regular basis that on its own can actually help you and allow you or make it even possible for one person to be able to um working evoke their ancestors and be able to see but like i said it depends on the spirits that you have and the ancestors that are working with you and how they operate it is not a one shoe fits all and that has been my motto in my videos for a very long time where as i say that spirituality is not a one shoe fits all what works for me will not necessarily work for the next angoma or the next spiritual person and that is something that i feel like um i feel like people need to take in consideration a lot and also another thing that i've been seeing on social media which was quite controversial is the matter of people from other races Men, like Caucasians, white people, Indian people, going and initiating. And honestly, I want to know about you guys. How do you guys see it? Ne? Before I state my point of view, because I have a very weird point of view compared to the ones that I've seen before. And I was just wondering, how do you guys necessarily see it as um, people that are following spirituality, following tradition, following and all this would you say that for an instance <laughs> sorry would you say that in your point of view this is something that is not supposed to be done and it's a form of um i don't want to say colonization but yeah maybe colonization towards our tradition as african people but like i said my point of view on it is quite controversial and i'd say that Okay, topic I saying dreaming. Okay, um, I guess you will resend your message, topic. Uh, if you do have a dream that you want clarity on, please feel free to put it here because this is a and A. I'm actually just stating my point of view while I'm waiting for questions to come in. <laughs> so, anyways, as I was saying, right, there's a lot of controversy towards seeing people that have um that are coming from different races going through and initiating to these angomas and it's causing a bit of a <laughs> a battle a spiritual battle amongst healers and afghan people and like i said my point of view of it is quite controversial because not the way that i personally understand spirituality is quite simple in terms of spirituality we are all spiritual beings regardless of who we are where we are where we come from right but the manner in which our spirituality works differs based on our cultures and our traditions right so when a person from a different race goes and initiates it puts a question mark on the fact that you are not part of this spiritual culture or you're not part of this african culture that is actually leading people to initiate but on the other side it is very important for people to understand that in terms of spirituality or being called into a spiritual gift or a spiritual calling, the major thing is the ancestors and the bloodline that is sent to you, right? That is coming to you, that is coming to guide you and coming to say the one who can possess or rather not really, let me not say possess because possess just sounds very weird, but rather the other one is going to take on this gift and use it, right? And... In the history, or rather in our bloodlines, I'd say one thing for a fact. We all have ancestors, forefathers from different races, different cultures and whatnot. So in my perspective, I often assume when I see people like white people or Asian people or Indian people going to initiate to be Sangomas, I normally see it as, or rather the way that I view it is, maybe for instance, this is someone who has a black or an african ancestor who had a gift and had this special gift in their bloodline and hence 
that is why they were called into Bungaka. But it is a very controversial thing because Lona, there is there have been history where as our culture and our tradition has been used to monetize or rather it has been monetized by people and I'm just saying that generally so, right? Um, everything five said the best teacher ever. Oh, stop there. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Let me go back to what I was about to say. <laughs> okay, and no Sipo says Tokoza Gogo. What does it mean if you continuously dream of green grass? The green, the grass is very short. Secondly, what does it mean? You dream of a man you know proposing to you, Tokozani. Okay, so basically green on its own and nature on its own, it's a sign of abundance. It is a distinctive sign of abundance, a sign of blessings, and can also indicate, especially when you're seeing grass or trees and whatnot, it can indicate a fresh start for you in life. Maybe, for instance, you may be someone who's going through a hard time in certain departments of your life, or you may be someone who is waiting or seeking a positive change in your life, right? And whereas you're seeing this, it's a confirmation from the ancestors, the spiritual guides that, you know what? Now it is time for you to be ready for the positive changes in your life. And when you dream of a man who is, that you know, proposing to you, that can actually come as it is. Because you know the thing about dreams, code, they're not all always rhetorical, whereas there's a mystery behind it. But it can actually indicate that maybe this person has intentions to pursue you in some manner. Your ancestors are preparing you for that but at the same time it could be someone that you do not know but coming in the presence of someone that you do know the thing the reason why they paid they could use that particular person that you know is for the fact that physically there are certain features that are very similar between these people physically and both maybe mentally emotionally character wise personalities you know so in terms of dreams, eh, the green grass is a sign of abundance, a sign of blessings, a sign of good things that are coming, a positive change. And the proposal could be a moving forward or a step forward in life, whereas there could be someone new coming into your life. And this person, given that the ancestors are showing you beforehand, this could be a person that is coming through with positive changes in your life. Um, okay. Um, Aaron, <laughs> hi Aaron Rock, um, used to assume that it was cultural appropriation until 20 years abroad and life kicked my ass. <laughs> you're a house for spirits, yeah, the only people you're responsible to convince. That is very true. That is the truest thing ever. Like, spirits are responsible for everything. They are responsible for everything. And at the end of the day, they're the only ones that you have to convince. When you're called into a spiritual gift, one thing for sure, God, you don't just wake up and say, I want to be a Sankoma. No one does that. But you can be... But you can be anyone from any type of cultural background and whatnot. And the truth of the matter is, when your ancestors, when the spirits choose you and they say that you are the one that's going to bear this gift... You're going to do it regardless of your culture and whatnot. And in addition to that, right, there's also um, this issue of Umjewa, right? I've spoken about this a lot in my past videos because it was a very interesting spirit, whereas it's a spirit of someone who passed away. It could have been a gruesome death, whereas they passed away in the hands of someone's ancestors. And this applies to all races, be it black, white, Indian, Asian, whatever ethnicity you or race you fall under right so this is where as that spirit can also choose a certain family and say that you're gonna do the beating or rather you are going to do my life work i'm gonna help people through you and look at this also that thing where as a person can actually live with a certain family and not be connected with their family or lose track of their family altogether and they if they have a gift can still say Given the fact that I grew up with these people, they were part of my family, they became family along the way, because not all families blood related from how I, I view family and relations and whatnot. This spirit can still say, I'm choosing this person. So in terms of race, anybody can be chosen into spirituality. The manner in which you'll be chosen is different. Others kebongaka, others is terror reading, others is mediumship. But there is, in spirituality, 
there is no barrier or rather no boundary in terms of your race there is none that is not how spirit works spirit works in terms of energy and aura and who you are and the bloodline that is there within your family and whatnot so yeah thank you for noting that down um Aaron. um it is not cultural appropriation it's only cultural appropriation if instead of this gift being taken for the main purpose of helping people it is taken for let's say monetary use or for the sick or the desire to get fame out of it then yeah that is why i would say it's appropriation everything five says gogo if i dream about home where i grew up being in the house and no lights it's so so dark it's like load shedding oh yes okay that is something that you should worry about that is actually a very concerning dream because generally having a dream whereas the entire place is dark it is it is a huge sign of um it, it is a huge sign of um that place being in a lot of darkness whereas you might find that even ancestors are not able to settle down there properly understand that the home that you grew up in that you grow up in in most cases that is the home that your ancestors stay until you collect them so that could be an indication from your ancestors that there are certain rituals that need to be done there okay? firstly it could be a ritual of um cleansing and protecting the household and secondly, it can be a ritual whereas the ancestors want to be brought into that home. Man. Or there could also be a curse in that bloodline or in that family. Man. And they're using that house as a metaphor to actually alert the family members that there is something wrong there that needs to be attended to. So my advice for you, Everything Five, is that go to anybody. It could be a prophet, a sangoma, wherever you feel comfortable going in. Go there and check about this in detail to see exactly of which ones of these things that I've mentioned would be the cause of this and what is the best act to take from there onwards, right? But it's also very important to note down who stays in that house at the moment because there are certain family members that inherit homes that do not allow spiritual work or they may be dabbling in their own things on the side. So consider that. And if you find that it is a place that you cannot really do anything in i'd advise you to speak to your ancestors about it and collect your spirits and bring them into the home that you stay in okay Aaron said yes and you get the and you get to feel their stories that is true honestly i feel like in this in my time of being a healer i've encountered so many people with so many different stories that you get to understand how spirituality works on a deeper level you never stop learning and the encounters you get are just perfect <laughs> okay and erin says oops fill their life or previous pain too and help them carry on practicing oh that is true with spirituality like i feel like the one thing that people tend to neglect given from what erin just said here is that thing you're worrying people assume that when you're taking over a spiritual gift you're just taking over the gift and that's it but it there's more than that the burdens the trauma the pain every single both negative and positive thing that your ancestors may have went through when they were alive you go through that and i remember in my early stages of being a sangoma or rather appeasing my ancestors there were so many things that were revealed to me and i'd wake up from visions and dreams in pain emotionally sometimes mentally and sometimes physically and you have to take whatever it is ever pain that your ancestors may have went through throughout their time of living and try your utmost best to i won't really say fix it but yeah let's just say fix it so they can actually have peace where they are while they allow you to continue the work that is going on that they chose you to carry on of that so it is a very it is a very i want to i don't want to say gruesome but it is a very emotional journey and i feel like that's one of the major reasons why a lot of people with um spiritual gifts experience anxiety attacks they experience depression not all the time is that because of the fact that you have this gift and you have to appease other times this is the trauma and the pain that your ancestors had went through during the time of living and these are things that have not been fixed Hence, that is why it's so important that at some point, if your ancestors have through a certain traumatic experience, it is very important for you to cleanse these ancestors. That way you can continue to work in a very peaceful manner, in a happy manner. Oh, okay, the comments are getting... Okay, Nosipo says, go, go. 
in the self-initiation video, you mentioned that you bought Amapai, which was a big mistake on your side. How do you know if you are supposed to purchase Amapai? Can it set you back spiritually? Okay, so buying Amapai is a very is a very complex situation. That is why I did say well, on, on my part, it was a mistake. Name. The reason being, not personally, I was never... I, okay, there were ancestors that wanted a self-initiation, but the leading ancestors for me were ancestors that wanted me to go through initiation right so the issue is that you can buy you can see i'm a buy and there are certain ancestors i would say we want you to get that yeah. but if you have multiple ancestors there are other ancestors that will not allow that so the major risk that you will get as a person or a person who has the ancestors is that you are most likely going to block some of the ancestors that are not resonating to those particular cloths because understand that every cloth has its own um, meaning for example even this jersey it's made out of an ancestral cloth the barking I forgot what it's named, Ngwe, right? So Ngwe, in most cases, it represents the Manguni ancestors. You cannot just go buy a Manguni cloth while you also have a Mandawe and expect your Mandawe spirits to also be okay. Before you do that, you need to ensure that your ancestors are joined, they are happy, they are working together happily. Because the minute you find that there's already a quarrel amongst your ancestors and you choose to buy a cloth, then it's going to set you back a lot because the Mandawe ancestors are going to, Take a step back and this is just generally the same applies with prophetic ancestors or any type of gift that you may have as a person if you have multiple gifts man. so those ancestors will take a step back and not only will they take a step back but they will also block the other ancestors that are working with you so it's very important for you to know whether or not it is the right time to buy things like cloths things like beads and whatnot know exactly who it is that it represents and in the process let's say for example you decide to buy these things it is also important for you to ask the other ancestors or well, since i'm buying this for the other ancestors what is it that you guys want to ensure that you are all appeasing you're all happy if you're not able to do that or if you're not able to see what needs to be <laughs> brought for them then it is a very advisable thing for you to partner and inform the ancestors that I saw, I saw that. And I am not saying that I don't want to do it. <sighs> As a matter of fact, I am just trying to make sure that no ancestors are blocked. And until you join your ancestors, until your ancestors are working together and they are one thing, then you can go ahead and buy all the things you want to do. You want to buy them. But not personally, I would often advise people to get those things when they're in initiation and my reason for that is that when you're in initiation all your ancestors are brought even the ones by longo they are very far and they don't communicate with you they are joined they are brought there yeah? and whereas they're all joined and they're there then it will allow you to just buy whatever you want to buy and whatever you need to buy without having the risk of any of your ancestors or any spirits blocking you in any way whatsoever what does it mean if lizards are always around you? Okay, so lizards, it's a very controversial thing. Name. So in terms of lizards, oh, and hi, goddess, bastard. Sorry for not saying it right. <laughs> um, so in terms of lizards, um, lizards are one of those creatures that are commonly used for a spiritual, as monitoring spirits. Name. Especially lizards such as geckos in my language, meaning the disturbers of sangomas and whatnot so lizards are not necessarily things that i would actually be comfortable with in my home or being around me at, especially if they are those type of lizards such as geckos but lorna at the same time be very mindful of your environments in some environments they are just always there and if let's say for example your home is protected then you shouldn't worry because monitoring spirits and whatnot cannot enter into a home that is protected there yeah? if let's say for example there are lizards around you a lot and you're not sure if they are sent spiritually as monitoring spirits the advice that i'll give you is that just get caught salt you can pour it in water spray it around the yard um and see if those lizards disappear for a while or if they continue to come if they continue to come it's most likely going to be nothing spiritual in any way whatsoever okay yeah. I hope that was enough. If maybe, for example, I you didn't get enough clarity from what I said, please let me know so I can go deeper into it. Um, Tobeka, Tobeke, so he's pronouncing your name. Um, Tobeke, Coco Zagogo. I am told, Kumelekita. 
um i don't i don't understand zulu i'm sorry i don't speak zulu can you please translate it into english i've been trying to learn zulu don't hate on me i've been trying to learn zulu it's just a very difficult language for me to learn um i can understand when people are saying it but when i have to read it it's something else so please translate it into english that way i can actually give you the answers that you need thank you um phyllis in the like at uh, hi phyllis um Tukosa Gogo, is it possible to self-initiate and later be sent to a copella after your self-initiation is complete yes that is actually possible and you know the funny thing is that i didn't even mention it in my video but it is possible because like i said people have multiple ancestors man you'd find that you are someone who has mandawe manguni nakachupias uh, manzunza balozi so three of these spirits like um nagachupias nzunza balozi those are self-initiating spirits those are spirits and ancestors that initiate a person on their own man so what they can do is that they can initiate you first ne? and after initiating you then the other ancestors will say now it is our turn ne? but spirits like nzunza like i've spoken about it a lot in my past videos name that one is a dominant spirit whereas if let's say for example your nzunza is um traditional and not prophetic and you also have manguni spirits then once you are pleased for it it is quite likely that you will they will make sure that you also attend to the traditional um aspects of everything to a point where as your manguni ancestors may not really require you to go and initiate at a copella's place ne? but what they may require from you is that you get her you will be namalop or you get her right so when i say you get her you dance the traditional um sangoma dance yeah that's what i mean by that so this is where as you might be asked or instructed to join a certain impande or a certain group of sangoma family that you'll be able to appease those traditional ancestors in the process but yes it is possible to self-initiate and then later on be sent to a copella but that clearly depends on the ancestors that you have okay um no see paul gogo what is the difference between amajazi is pika okay so i don't know what the last word is saying mengupo okay but Amajas name. So these are both prophetic um attires. So a jazz coat is sort of like um it's similar to a lab coat, name. It's a lab coat. <laughs> yeah, it's similar to a lab coat. That's how I can define it. So usually in most cases, Amajazi they represent um male prophetic spirits, name. So people that have male prophetic ancestors are most likely to wear the jazz name. And the people that wear have is pika. Pika is basically yeah, it's mostly related to their female ancestors. But this day and age, a man can have his PK, a woman can have a jazz. But basically, the both of them, they will connect you to the ancestors that are governing you. So let's say, for instance, you have um, a prophetic grandfather who was mainly associated with um, blue, ne? blue cloths. So this particular grandfather will most likely want you to have a blue jazz and Logan also levels to that kind of jazz code that you have right um so there's a jazz code for a normal prophet there's a jazz code for a pastor there's a jazz code for a bishop so they differ in terms of the level of spiritual gift in terms of your prophetic gift that you have a speaker is usually what you what the female spirits wear it is often like we like um but again it is often it often represents female ancestors but loana every type of a speaker has its own meaning every color of the speaker has its, has its own meaning and they also have their own levels all in all and then we also have what we call monazareth it's also a very important attire in terms of the prophetic gift and that one basically um is a higher level of a prophetic ancestor i think i'm i have to make a video where long i'm gonna look into or rather i'm gonna explain about these things into details whereas with the pika i can actually inform you guys on the general meaning of is pika and what it means and also munazaret and how it's used and when it is used but mostly it has got to do with the feminine energy and the muscular energy in terms of the prophetic gift that you have um god has busted busted i hope i'm saying your name right because when i say it i feel like i'm cursing busted 
you know <laughs> yeah um i appreciate your help so much that was great info on lizards please make a video on it because you seem to have great info on it i'll definitely do that now i'll definitely make a video on it i'm gonna note that down um basically a video on um different prophetic attires like the jazz coats and speakers and also on lizards and other monitoring spirits or rather animals that can be used as monitoring spirits and also general ways in which you can remove them even though the issues is that those general ways may be temporary are going to be temporary but at least if you are able to use them and see whether or not they are monitoring spirits by whether or not they appear or disappear still then you can take it from there in terms of protecting your home spiritually okay so those are the questions that i'm getting so far yeah but yeah so far okay what has been the biggest challenge you've experienced in your spiritual journey the interaction with people um okay so <laughs> okay i can't believe i answered that one so fast like my ancestors have been waiting for me to complain about it <laughs> okay i'm not complaining right but it just i just feel like as a spiritual person, okay, there are a lot of challenges I've encountered, but the first one for me, I'd say that it was always the interaction with people because I'd say that people are different, characters are different, and I'd find people that tend to be very rude and walk over you because you are a Sangoma, even though they came to you to do the assistance. So it's a very it's a very interesting scenario. That's the first thing. So interaction with people. But that does not mean that I haven't met great people. Like honestly, I'd say eighty percent of the people that I've interacted with have been amazing. Have been one of the most amazing people ever and I got to learn a lot from them along my way and throughout my spiritual journey. And secondly, it's a matter of having, or rather, having my ancestors work together properly. Because when you, let's say, for example, you have um, multiple ancestors at work, there's a bit of a competition. And there isn't a common understanding, whereas if you do certain things more, let's say, for example, because now I'm someone who would personally, I love herbs. I love learning about herbs. I love the traditional part of my gift so much. Ne? And that puts me in a position where as other ancestors tend to be very upset about that, um, blockages can come. So having your ancestors like, together and cooperate and allow you to also live your life it's a bit of a hassle and also the expectations that you have as a Sangoma or the expectations that people have for you as a Sangoma. And I feel like people forget that we are also human. We are also like, just like the next person all because we have this gift doesn't mean that we can't live a life outside. So there are just so many challenges, but those three, I feel like are the major challenges that I have gotten. And oof, they've just, but I've learned to work around them. I feel like as time goes on, you learn to navigate around things. You learn how to cope in certain situations. And it's no longer as difficult as it is in the beginning. And yeah. And also I'm a chance. Like I, the number of times I've had people come to me and say, you have to come to me so I can initiate you. All I've been is I'm going for a long time and I'm showing things on a regular basis. It's too many times and it's hilarious but it always does bother me a lot to an extent so that's also a big challenge that you experience as a sangoma or as a spiritual person going through your spiritual journey like it's just it's a very interesting journey but most of the other things that back then i'd look at as challenges right now i'd say that they were pretty cool they were like good experiences i've learned a lot from them um Suddenly, so hi Gogo. I dreamt of black and white bees, but I was in the sky. Okay, so usually black and white bees they represent among Guni ancestors, right? Um, but Lona, when you're in the sky, um, that makes it a bit more complex. But black and white bees represent usually Manguni ancestors, right? But Lona understand that bees don't resonate the same for every single person. Ne? For instance, um, 
I had black beads on, like completely all black beads. And in most cases, the black beads represent um, the Sutu ancestors. Yes, I do have Sutu ancestors and a Sutu cousin, but those ones were specifically beads that I was instructed to wear for protection. Okay? So it could be that your Manguni ancestors are veiling themselves or showing themselves, but at the same time, they are also showing you that there are prophetic ancestors there. And you'd find that you have an ancestor who used both traditional and prophetic things. And those beads on their own can represent both the prophetic side of this ancestor's gift and also the traditional side of this ancestor's gift. Yeah. So we spoke about the issue of seeing beads and cloths um, before entering initiation. I don't know if you've initiated or not, but um, let's say, for instance, you haven't initiated. The advice that I would give you is for you to partner about it. Ask your ancestors more about it as to what it is that you need to do. Maybe you need to get those beads, mm. partner for them, wear them, but be sure that no other ancestors are going to be upset. Or secondly, you can um, get them, partner for them, put them aside until you are supposed to buy them or just partner and inform the ancestors that you have um, thing it. You've seen it, you don't neglect anything, you're just waiting for all the ancestors to be happy and, you know, give you what, tell you what they want, or just basically enter a pet journey if that is where your journey is going to take you. Um, Shimi, what makes Muti bought from shops or getting sell from the forest and Muti from traditional healers? Okay, um, I'll, okay, I think what you're trying to ask is, what is the difference between Muti brought from shops and Muti you get from the forest and also Muti from traditional healers? Okay, so generally Muti at the shops, everyone goes and get them. Linda, when there's certain Muti that I don't have access to around where I'm staying, I do go to the shops and get them. Ne? It's not a problem. But the issue is the spiritual power that you have as a person. So for someone who has went through initiation, spiritually you're powerful. You use the strength. Not saying that you're not spiritual powerful when you haven't you haven't initiated. It's just that you have tapped into a higher level of spirituality. So it allows your hands to use this particular muti and get the best results out of them, right? So basically, they're pretty much all the same. It just depends on how far along you are spiritually, how active your ancestors are in empowering the muti that you'll be using. Because all in all, it's not a matter of who is using it, but who are the ancestors that are behind it. So they can all work the same. Ne? They can all work the same, only regarding as to whether or not your ancestors' gift and power is going to be active there. That is why you find that a person who doesn't have a spiritual gift can go and buy muti for a specific elders from the knowledge that they have. Ne? But find that this particular muti doesn't work for them. But this particular person can go to a sangoma or a prophet Get this very same muti and it works instantly. It is a matter of the power and the strength of the ancestors in that regard. That is why Lorna I always tell people that certain ends like there are certain people that specialize in certain illnesses, and that is the power that the ancestors gave him in regards to the gift that they are given or the gift that they have. I hope that answers your question. If you feel like maybe I missed out on something, please let me know just so I can go deeper into that. But I can also make a video about that. Oh, you guys are giving me so many good ideas. <laughs> My form is a laziness. I feel like um, I get so tired and lazy to take videos that, yeah, that is my problem. But I can also look into that. But I feel like this live session, or rather the answer that I put there was quite clear. And there isn't more that I can add on to it. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see if there's anything that the answer says will want me to add on to it one day. Um got a sis Tokozani. Tokozani. Um yeah, so those are the questions that I'm getting so far. Um yeah, so if there aren't gonna be any more questions, I will leave the live session soon, but I will wait for a few minutes. See if there's any other thing that you guys may be wanting. Okay, Shimi says, are you allowed to teach herbs to the not gifted people? Okay, so that is very controversial. Um, I'll say that in most cases, it depends on your ancestors, but Lorana, they form part of what we call Sipiri Sabongaka, the secret of, the secrets of spirituality. So in general, it is not really advisable or rather healers are not necessarily allowed to teach herbs to people randomly so. 
né? but people do it and i'm not saying this out of judgment to anybody um ancestors work different some ancestors are pretty chilled with it but others are not but the issue with that is that you'd find that every single muti has its own um working has its own repercussions so you cannot just use muti in j because you saw it and you were told about it just like that there are other things behind the muti and hence that is why it is i saw polygamous and i'm busy trying to answer this question this looks juicy okay let me finish my thing where was i um so basically every type of muti has its own repercussions so if you're going to teach a person about muti i'd say that it is best that you go through every single up and down version of this muti but in normal cases it's not really allowed it's not really allowed it's part of sipiri sabongaka but times have changed you know we Sangomas are doing what we want to do. We being gangster and everything. So, yeah, that is the reality of things. Um, <laughs> everything five is saying, go, go, stop making us laugh. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop. I'm sorry. Not naturally, I'm always laughing. That is just the person that I am. I'll try to be serious for once in my life. Um, no, Sipo is saying, go, 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 go. What dreams can indicate that you will be married into a polygamous marriage? Okay, so that is actually quite a tricky one, ne? But usually in terms of polygamous relationships, there might not always indicate that you're going to be in a polygamous relationship. But I had this lady, she's actually a Sangoma, ne? So I met her beforehand. So before meeting her husband, who is a polygamous, a polygamist, and um, married her as the second wife, her ancestors did come to her and tell her that she is going to marry a polygamous man. So in most cases, the ancestors may come personally and say, not personally, like in your dreams and visions and say that you are going to get married into a polygamous relationship. Né? Or in instance, they can show you a person who's spoken about the ancestors, give me a partner, having you dream about this person and whatnot. I'm still waiting for my day. I'm complaining, but it's cool. I'll complain for some more, some more time. Anyways. <laughs> So you could have your ancestors show you a partner and say that this is the person for you and you can find that later on this particular person is in a polygamous relationship. And Loana, another thing is also looking at the background of your culture. So if let's say for example you come from a background or a family where it was polygamous relationships, that was um a polyg polygamous marriages, that was the I don't know if I should, M.O. of the family, then you're most likely going to be guided to be in a polygamous relationship. But it can put a bit of a strain if you do have a spiritual gift because there are certain ancestors, especially the male spirits, that are very possessive and they just want you to be the center of everything in any way possible. So as long as your ancestors or if maybe you are accepting of a polygamous relationship or a polygamous marriage, just make sure that even your male ancestors are happy with it. But basically the dreams is you being told about it or being shown a man who is already married to somebody else. That could be the biggest signs that you're going to be in a polygamous relationship or marriage. Um, Sanelisa says, yes, Gogo, can you please explain more about the body that you're wearing? Ooh, okay, so this fine thing that I'm wearing right here, it is called... Um, Okay, the cloth itself, it is um so ngwe is basically I think it's a oh it's a leopard. So my petty is is very bad. I don't I don't know how I got to this point at this age yet. I can't even differentiate between a tie a leopard and a cheetah in <laughs> proper Sutu language. But anyways, so basically this cloth is um a leopard cloth. In most cases, it represents um, Manguni ancestors, right? And whereas it represents Manguni ancestors, it's also a cloth that actually indicates warrior spirits, warrior ancestors. So this is also a cloth that personally, I would say most healers that I have, not everybody, but the ones that I have used these cloths in terms of fighting spiritual battles and whatnot, or when they are trying to appease the Manguni spirits. And um, in most cases, this will be accompanied by an arrow. There are specific arrows that are spiritual or guided by the ancestors that people need to get. And those arrows also go hand in hand with this cloth to represent the 
Manguni ancestors, right? So with this cloth, there are different colors um, in terms of the colors. Colors in terms of this cloth, I'd say that they're not really as important as they are in cloths like um, Njeti and whatnot, right? So you can get them in any color. Not Monday, I was called towards the white and the red. So meaning well, those are the ones that my ancestors wanted. And Lorana, this cloth, you can also be told to get this if Gamogaye, the totem of the family, is also Dengue Neng. Because also the cloths that we have not only represent the ancestors that are governing us, but they can also represent the totems of our family. And by wearing it, you're connecting with the people in the family that um, are governed by this particular totem. Okay. Um, I hope. Yeah. So Nosito is saying, Gogo, thank you so much for your YouTube videos. Thank you. <laughs> I truly appreciate your beautiful words. Thank you so much. And I will definitely keep posting more videos so everyone can have more clarity on spirituality and spiritual things. And yeah. And I'll also do more live videos because I feel like this question and answers live session is actually really nice. I'm enjoying it. Um, she was saying, Tokoza Gogo, would you make a video about some herbs to soul cleanse? um personally no, i don't teach people herbs right what i can do let me see i don't teach traditional herbs so the ones that i could actually plug you guys on are natural herbs such as like um things like rosemary's cloves those types of um natural herbs because they're not really necessarily traditional herbs the downside of them is that they are quite temporary they work for a very short period of time so yes if maybe for instance you want to use something for now while you're preparing to go to a healer to cleanse yourself then yeah that would be great but in most cases i would advise that you go to someone for cleansing and the thing about cleansings and whatnot you can still like anybody as long as a person is a spiritual healer someone is spiritually gifted cleansing is actually one of the fundamental things that i feel like we all know so it won't be hard to get clarity to get assistance on that yo i haven't burped so much in a long time <laughs> someone is happy um anyways um, yeah but i will make videos on natural herbs that can actually help in terms of cleansing but do check out my previous videos i have it on how to use cause salt um it does talk about protecting your home protecting your aura and also a bit of um cleansing even though it is something that only works for a temporary period of time i did make her a video about certain plants even though the plants were mainly about money attraction plants and also protection plants i think they're gonna be very good in terms of um the in terms of assisting you with um what you want to know about can sleeping directions affect your spirit one spiritual and or physical yes sleeping directions are actually very important sleeping directions are very important so basically east is whereby you're most likely gonna be restless but you're gonna have a lot of visions the minute you manage to go to sleep this is where as every single spiritual battle that you're not seeing you're gonna see it name and then we have south is it south or north because I'm like I think I'm facing south or north here. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Let me see. Okay, so south. Um I'll say that south Yona, it's um it's okay. You can have dreams, can have visions, um, so you don't really have much of issues in terms of it, in terms of your spiritual or physical self. Um and then we have west. West is also a good di and semi good direction. Yeah. so the issue with sleeping facing west in my experience is that i personally find myself becoming very drowsy throughout the day but my dreams and visions they're quite blurry they're not as clear as they usually are when i'm facing south and east right and then when we're facing north north no i'm mixing this i'm sorry south is where north is whereby your dreams are clear you see dreams but they're not as clear as east and south is where as completely your dreams are gonna be you're not really gonna see much and you're most likely going to encounter more spiritual attacks than anything and also 
where you're facing let's say for example you're facing upwards when you're sleeping that is where as you're most likely going to encounter spiritual attacks um because facing upwards when you're sleeping is also a way in which you're going to open a spiritual portal and that is most likely going to result in sleep paralysis from people that are spiritually gifted and whatnot um facing right is not a problem um you're gonna have dreams and also facing left is where long worry your dreams are gonna be there but they're not really gonna be as rememberable as they should be i hope that was enough but i also do have a video on sleeping direction whereas i go into that in details but that was basically the overview of different sleeping directions and how they can affect your body and also one thing that i forgot in terms of facing where east right as much as you're going to have a lot of dreams and visions you are going to go be so tired when you wake up and the tiredness comes from the spiritual battles that you're going to be fighting um the spiritual activities the visions the dreams because honestly in all honesty visions and dreams are the most tiring things ever and i literally wake up every morning feeling like gawk <laughs> and i'm not even gonna lie from the visions and dreams that i get to see so yeah <laughs> that is the problem the life problem of a spiritual person i'd say that that is the <laughs> issue of being a spiritual person but most cases i'd advise that you face east when you're sleeping especially if you want more revelations if let's say for example you have a dream and you're like you wanna you have a prayer and you wanna see something in details face is so you can actually get the results that you need faster Coco, what is the difference between normal beats and jamma crystal beats okay so normal beats man basically the beats jabungaka i'm not wearing any of my beats but yeah the beats jabungaka jonah they are beats that represent the spirits and the ancestors they bring our ancestors closer to us. They connect us with the spiritual guides that we're working with and that are working with us. And they allow us to converse and communicate with the ancestors easily. That is not the same for everyone. Some people don't wear beads at all, but they are still seeing things fine, just like me, you know. And then there are like um, crystal bracelets and whatnot. So those in most cases, they are mainly for protection, for clearing out your aura, and also enhancing your spiritual abilities. So it depends on the kind of crystal stone that you have. And they also have alternative, um, alternate um, barking purposes. For instance, now most of the times I love the amethyst. I really wear the amethyst, and that is actually to help in terms of um, barking this thing, in terms of creativeness. Yeah, you know, as a creative myself so it's very good so and also we have the canalian which is a singer stone so they all have their own personal like not really personal i mean anna guys my english bundles are getting depleted they're getting depleted very fast but they all have different uh marking purposes and whatnot but traditional or normal beats are to connect you and bring you closer to the ancestors the crystal stones are to clear your aura enhance your spiritual abilities and protect you to a certain extent in terms of spirituality let's say for example going to an area and um let's say there's a lot of negative energy there when you're wearing crystal beads um yeah crystal bracelets and whatnot you're most likely going to be able to fight off the negative energies and auras that are around you as compared to natural beads because normal beads are basically just to bring your ancestors closer um ahim bc boy okay i'm gonna say johnson i'm johnson from uganda tokozani and thank you for the clothing of ingwe we do put all put it on here too oh that is actually pretty cool <laughs> no thank you jackson i actually didn't know that in uganda you also wear the ingwe cloth but it is a very it is a great information to get i actually met someone from uganda a few hours ago and i was like very excited i think <laughs> yeah so i'm actually glad that you guys were it and thank you for your comment um shimi is there a special reason on the shape of a traditional healer's room on dumba okay so basically then dumba's direction or rather the shape is very much connected with both it's very much similar to the shape of um uh, umsamo because in most cases your umsamo is supposed to be a circle healer shape right? but yeah, that's a story for another day. So the circle is actually um sort of like allows spirits from all different directions, positive spirits, ancestors from all different directions because ancestors or rather our forefathers are buried in different places. So the circular shape is also a way to allow 
the ancestors, for you to connect with ancestors from all different directions as opposed to the square. And it's also one of those traditional um, customs that we've had for a very long time. So not all things are for spiritual purposes, but also they are for cultural purposes. Our forefathers, our ancestors, our grandmothers, they used um, the circular hut and it was good. And also the thatch roof, it's also a very spiritual it is very spiritual on its own whereas it allows protection of some sort like spiritual protection it is something that i never really got to understand properly but usually the thatch roof is to allow protection and to signify the presence or rather the sense that this is a spiritual home and also on the ground you find that people are using barking block or um cow dung to actually connect you with the earth and the soil and whatnot. So yes, the secular shape is very important. It is to connect you with all spirits from all walks of life, depend regarding wherever, like in re regardless of wherever this person may be buried and whatnot. And also it is a traditional norm for most people from the African country, continent. Yeah, African continent, yeah. <laughs> Angel Akashics, go, go. What does being a custodian really mean? Um, a custodian. That is English, guys. That is deep English. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, so basically, being a custodian is is being someone who is um, I'd say not in my understanding. I don't know if I'm wrong. I can I'll Google check it once this video is done, and then I'll come back to the comment section and tell you guys if I if I lied or not. But being a custodian, in my perspective, is being someone who is who has mastered something or rather mastered spirituality and also someone who is equipped in the learning of it i don't know if i'm right about this um i don't know if i'm right about this completely but that is my personal understanding if i'm wrong please let me know i i prefer honesty on the jump because yeah <laughs> yeah but in my from my knowledge is basically just being a spiritual expert and also being someone who is called into the spiritual path of everything and of life yeah okay any more questions okay let me wait and see if there's any more questions it's almost been an hour your time flies guys time really flies and i actually entered this live session assuming that it's gonna be for like 30 minutes but i guess i'm enjoying myself a little too much and yeah <laughs> i'm losing track of time but yeah let's see if there's any more questions if there isn't i'll definitely be working on okay yeah i'll definitely be working on the videos that i did mention that i'll do um during this live session um but lona there are other videos that are actually i've uploaded them but they are pending they'll be out in the next few days the first one is basically dreaming about your ex because people have been asking me about that and it's been bothering a lot of people. And the other one is, um, what is that? Soul ties. Okay. What is judges, their purpose exactly? I'm a judgy. I'm a judgy judges. Okay, can you please rephrase that? Maybe say it in um, Sutu if you can because... I don't know if you're actually talking about judges, judges, like the court judges, or you are referring to judges in a different term, because there are certain Zulu terms that personally I don't really know or understand altogether, and it will be easy. Spiritual judges. Spiritual judges. I've never looked into that, if I'm honest with you. I've never really looked into that, but from my understanding at least this is just breadcrumbs of what i've picked up on it um and this was basically looking at different african cultures and whatnot so back in the old days there wasn't really like cards and whatnot so there were spiritual methods or spiritual ways in which to identify whether someone is guilty or not so i would say that that is the purpose of them but what i'll do because i really don't want to speak on something that i'm not really sure about exactly but i will actually look into that in details and get back to you basically maybe with a video yeah definitely with a video and just go into details about it i'll be doing my research on that like from here onwards from today 
بازی میشینیم دیگه By the way, I am a smoker. <laughs> My mom will be judging me if she sees this video. But this is basically how I connect with my ancestors. I'm actually not supposed to use um barking this thing. Um it's BB, um tobacco, right? Because I'm I'm a man, you know. So <laughs> I don't like tobacco that much, so I use cigarettes. Just to avoid or get rid of the spiritual headaches and to calm my ancestors when they are on a rampage okay um angel says oh that makes sense Gogo. so if a person is a custodian of the family then they are the ones that are equipped to learn and execute spiritual matters oh yeah now i understand the whole custodian thing <laughs> meaning that the, the answer that i gave is actually the right one yeah so because basically a custodian like someone who is a custodian of the family is basically the leader of the family whereas when certain rituals need to be done like for example um a slaughtering needs to be done this is the person that actually does it so in my culture in most cases the brother of the of the father he's the one who is often in charge of spiritual rituals within the family and spiritual rituals within um yeah basically the family spiritual matters and in most cases if we're gonna look at a custodian within the family it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's spiritually gifted man it doesn't necessarily have to be someone who's always who's spiritually gifted it can also be someone in the family who has been taught certain spiritual customs or traditional customs in the family to actually assist those that are in the family or the family members the siblings the cousins and whatnot to actually execute certain things so in most cases in most families especially in my culture certain rituals cannot be done without the custodian unless if um for instance that person is no longer alive or there are certain issues family issues that deprive this person from assisting in that matter thank you for actually the second question actually clarified everything for me but at least it wasn't really far from the definition that i assumed was the right one from the jump so yeah but <laughs> it makes a lot of sense and i'm glad you pointed that out we learn every day and i appreciate that thank you And no judgments on the smoking. I have to point this out. Please. <laughs> I beg of y'all. <laughs> I get judged enough as it is. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, any more questions? Okay, so I'm going to be leaving the live session soon. So, yeah, if there's any questions, please point them out while we're still on. And if not, I will try to go live again very soon. I'm actually enjoying the live sessions. And, yeah. I will go alive again very soon and we will jump into more questions and answers and just look into everything in more details from here onwards. Okay. So it looks like there are no more questions for this Q&A session. But anyways, I really enjoyed it. And just like all of you guys also learned a few things too while I was here. And yeah, I'll post the videos that I spoke about very soon. I'm actually going to take them, meaning that they're going to be scheduled to be released in the next few weeks. Because the ones that I've posted are basically the ones that I've scheduled to post or launch are going to be launching in the next, like for the next three weeks or so so yeah you guys be ready for that i will definitely do what i did say that i will do and thank you guys for joining my live thank you guys for interacting with me and thank you guys for the support of this channel it's something that i truly appreciate and i will continue to give you guys more videos anyways you guys have a beautiful beautiful night Bye bye I'm waiting for someone to say bye before I log off because that will only feel right for me. Okay, fine then. No one's saying bye. Bye. <laughs>